David Zaritsky from the Bond Experience. Joe Darlington from Being James Bond. And we are back. We are. I'm surprised you're back because our last <laughs> discussion around Diamonds Are Forever, the fact that uh, we have a theory, it's a new one, that the, uh, the Bond actors, their last film were probably their worst. We're testing them out. We had to go back and watch all the films. <laughs> we gave you Diamonds Are Forever. It was pretty harsh. Yeah. Uh, but we're back. We are. You're a glutton for punishment. We are. We we literally sat and watched all the worst Bonds in a row. <laughs> well, we're gonna we're gonna ask or, ourselves. Or, or did we? Are they the worst? Right. Are the last ones the worst? I mean, yeah. did they you know just shoot the uh, actor jettison them into <laughs> space <laughs> after that? And it's amazing we did it mm. perfectly sober, which was probably a mistake. This is true. Yeah. I, I wonder if it would have yeah. been different. Bloody Marys next time. But that's yeah, <laughs> but we're we're here to talk about Roger Moore. We are. And more importantly, behind us, uh, the backdrop. Is San Francisco. It's 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 a view to a kill. Yep. Um, so uh, we we had already talked about this. I get to yeah. go first. I can't. I I told Dave. I said you have to go first because he's. This is the one oh. that we talked a little bit off off. You know, as we were prepping. Yes. And you were just like, this is the one. So I, I've got a. I have a confession with this one. Um, uh -huh. I was so moved, not in a good way, after watching this. Uh, that I called you mm -hmm. and I said, dude, I don't know what to do here. Like, <laughs> like this is a totally different film than what I remember. Uh -huh. um, it, it was, it was bad. Ah, <laughs> oh! and, and I, I, yeah. I used to say things about Bond films. I said, Bond films are like sex and pizza. Even when they're bad, they're good. <laughs> funny, funny, funny. But I, I can't say that anymore <laughs> because I've watched A View to a Kill again. I, I watched it by myself. Danielle uh -huh. refused to watch it. <laughs> so smart and um you know okay so the pre-title sequence comes on and there yeah. <laughs> there are some moments um you know ski suit look, looks cool there's a little bit of action um you know the, the you know the, the the skidoo explodes he gets on the snowboard uh and then the beach boys <laughs> start and then, <laughs> then i'm like I remembered it, but yeah. I'm like, no. Right. It, it is, it's jarring. It, you know what's funny about that? Well, first of all, you're absolutely right. It starts off good. Yeah. The, the, this, this looming score, John Barry's score, yes. is really good. Oh my gosh. And then all of a sudden, chop to just utter goofiness. You know what cracks me up about that particular moment? Again, when you look at it in retrospect, boy, is it still to this day as painful as it was when you first saw it. But if you tried to explain to a younger Bond fan today, like a preteen Bond fan who's just getting into James Bond, and that happens, and they asked you, I don't get it, why is that funny? Think of the steps you would have to go to to explain the context of that yes. silly, stupid joke. Well, snowboarding wasn't really a thing back then yet, so it looked kind of like surfing, and there was this band, the Beach Boys, who was associated with surfing, and even though they had a surfing song, they didn't use that because California Girls was also making a comeback because there was a guy named David Lee Roth who was doing They'd be like, what? You, you've lost me, and you I will never watch me. a Bond film again. Right. Yeah, and then, and then you know, it didn't get better, so I, I'd love to jump into the score, but I'm not mm. even there yet. <laughs> so then you have Roger Moore, who I, I need to say this out loud. Rest in peace, Sir Roger Moore, the most amazing guy off screen and on screen. I love him, I adore him. He was always my first James Bond, he always will be. Mm. He is amazing. This is not, this is not a, a smashing of, of Roger Moore. But my gosh, when he takes down the hood and he's there with that young girl, and it is oh, a girl, yeah, yeah. and he's like, oh, I'm going to shack up with you. I just, nowadays, I'm sorry, I got creeped out. Yes. I wasn't like, there's the old lover boy Bond. I'm yes. like, I, no. I, that, you know, you're absolutely right. That is much more noticeable now as I get older, just how ridiculously young this girl is compared to how old he was. Ooh, is that yeah, my she was um, she was in the film like my uh, my daughter Ashlyn's age. Who's my my daughter Ashlyn is twenty six, and I I seriously that's all I could see. Now I get it. I'm putting it through my own eyes and experience. But you do, yeah. But you know, and then and then they showed this submarine, which was supposed to be an iceberg, <laughs> which doesn't look anything like the other icebergs. And then right. it starts going really quickly, like they sped up the film so for some. <laughs> right then and there, I'm like, I seriously uh, started to grip the couch, yeah. and I'm like, what have I done? <laughs> and then and then, hold on, the music start. Dun 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 dun. 
dun dun dun, and I'm like, I'm loving it. Right. The yeah. View to Kill song is amazing. Totally. Did you like that? Oh, absolutely. I, and and it's odd how much I still enjoy it to this day. When yes. that comes on, I love it as much now as I did. I play it in the car. Back. Meeting Love you. It. I won't do it. Yeah. We'll lose followers. But <laughs> That's great. It, it is an amazing song. Yeah. Now, I really studied this time the opening look, though. And, boy, does this feel like they did it on the cheap. You know, mm. the neon lipstick. And I know it's a sign of yeah. the times. But even the way they did the cuts and the look, they mm. weren't really lined up. And it looked cheap. And it was the same yeah. girl used over and over again. Mm. Like, you see some of the things before... You know, with Octopussy and some of these other opening yeah. um, title sequences. And then you see the ones after. Mm. It's like, what happened here? Did they run out of money? Yeah, I, 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 if I had to take a guess, I'd say, I mean, Morris Binder had been doing that for years at that point. He, it was getting to where I think he, he knew he could just phone it in at this point. So, yeah, the, it was not a lot of creativity or polish. Yes. And then, and then, okay, so I know I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel like there's a bloody bat named Lucille and I'm just like whacking <laughs> things away. But all of a sudden, then you see the characters, you see, you see Roger Moore, you see M, you see Money Penny, mm. and I'm sorry, it looked like, you know, a scene from Murder, She Wrote. Like, where's Angela <laughs> Lansbury? And where's the smell of Ben Gay and Depends Diapers yeah. in the air? And wait, no! And then suddenly I'm thinking of Daniel Craig, like... Daniel Craig was kicking ass in Quantum of Solace, and I'm like, okay, so this was Bond yeah. in A View to a Kill. Yeah, I, I'm sure glad we decided not to hold back in these videos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, everyone. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean, but I, I want to be honest about yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. what I'm feeling, because here's the thing. I've got in my mind, even as a 51-year-old, I've got to set up in my mind mm. That is the guy, James Bond, who's going to kick ass yeah. and save the day throughout the whole right. movie. Yeah, yeah. And I can't get there. Right. Well, I'll tell you what. This is going to surprise you a little no, bit. No, no, no. I hope you liked it. Well. Certain things. I did like it. I do like it a lot more than I did. Okay. I kind of, I mean, again, I'm not saying that this is in my top 10 or even my top 15 or anything. Uh, but I have kind of learned, this one's kind of got a soft spot for me. Good. Uh, Why? I don't, it's hard to really put my finger on it exactly, but, you know, we just got finished ripping Diamonds Are Forever. Yes. And that, to me, is a film that, that wanted to be lighthearted, wanted to be funny and over the top or whatever, and does it in a really goofy, hodgepodgey kind of a way. Yes. I feel like A View to a Kill also wants to be lighthearted and fun, and does it much better, where the story is still pretty intact. Right. Uh, the the tone is good. I mean, Roger Moore is still fun in this, yeah. and I kind of feel like Roger's charm not only does it shine through, but one of the things that I kind of laugh at is that when he does his Sinjin Smythe um, yeah. cover, yeah, and he's sort of being a rich playboy. I feel like that's just Roger Moore playing Roger Moore. It's That's almost true. like I, I, I'm true. not even playing James Bond right now. I'm just going to play Roger Moore the way Roger Moore lives lives his life, and, yes. and that's sort of what we get. So his charm gets to sort of shine a little bit. Yes. Uh, the locations are terrific. The score is fantastic. The the villains are good. Uh, well, you're going through a checklist. We should we should hit a couple of these at a time because yeah. I okay. So I'll surprise you back. Good. What you're saying, a lot of the things I agree with. Like mm -hmm. for example. Um, I had I had some trouble with the way the characters were treated. I was I had some trouble with the campier moments. However, I liked the story a lot. Mm. So the story as a whole is Bond on a mission. Yes. Which you know I've got a huge yeah. heart for Bond on a mission. And when he was at the chateau, when he was mm. St. John Smythe, I loved the whole thing. Now, I felt it was it felt a little um not not the look of of the chateau, obviously, but to me, this is where the Bond film looked a little eighties ish. It looked okay. a little inexpensive. Like I always look at Bond films and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's luxury. Like the film yeah, yeah. looks good. It, right. it feels good. This to me, like you know, when they had the fight, um, you know, when the guy gets wrapped in the box and things like that, yeah. and things are sped up. I'm like, yeah. it just it looks like an eighties TV show yeah. or something like that of James Bond. Yeah. But, you know, even the interaction of, of James Bond and, you know, his chauffeur, you know, the guy yeah, that right. was undercover, yeah. I actually do like those moments. Yeah, I do too, right. Again, the, the interaction is good, but you're right. Moments like that, that really kind of, I, again, Moore is really up there 
age-wise. And, and again, they, they make the mistake that they didn't make an octopus. An octopus, I thought that they played to his age with a sense of experience uh, and, and a little panache. Yes. Um, here, the, the, the fight scenes are just clunky because he's just too old to be fighting. Uh, the the Bond girl, I won't jump ahead, but you know, right. that he appear, is, is really awkward, that age difference. Uh, so yeah, you're right. The 80s-ish laziness in moments shines through, right? And they're kind of relying on the beautiful uh, locations to sort of cover the tracks a little bit. I, I agree with you there. I mean, it, it is clunky in very many ways. Even when they get to um, San Francisco from a plot point, mm. I get it. Um, and and I think it, it works that he's there, but the way they they treated the fire engine scene and some of those other aspects sure, yeah. just feels like it's this kind of travelogish, you know, James Bondish TV show that it's trying to be James Bond, yeah, but it, it's not quite there for me. Yeah, uh, right with the Keystone Cops and all that yeah. stuff too. Yeah, again, going for the slapsticky laughs as opposed to maybe the more natural, you know, kind of laughs that. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. It, it is a little wonky in that respect, for sure. But, but I will say this. So some of the, the more a couple more positive aspects. Mayday yeah, and um, obviously Zorin. I think yeah. the bad guys in this movie, even Zorin's um, mentor slash father slash creepy old guy, right. uh, scientist, yeah. I thought they were all really good, interesting characters. Mayday, I think it works. Yeah. I know you know she's not, quote, unquote, a professional actress. She's more model. Yeah. Um, you know, she's she's a little wacky in real life, yeah. obviously. She was almost like the Mr. T of, of the Bond films. Yeah. Like, like more, just more of a... A character. Uh, a character that, you, yeah. Yeah, but she was kind of... I, I, I liked her, and she was sensual to Bond, and mm. she connected with Bond, and she had a little redemption moment, which I didn't buy in the end. Um, Zorn to me, uh, Christopher Walken can't do any wrong. Yeah. To me. And sure. this is a young Christopher Walken who... Yeah. He wasn't quite um, into the caricature of Christopher Walken. I got a fever! And the only prescription is more cowbell. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. So he was still doing that kind of throaty acting. Yeah. He worked for me. I, I agree. He, he is spot on. He was somebody I kind of feel like, again, it was sort of a moment in time where, you know, well, who, who, was, who, who would make a good, out of the actors now, who would make a good villain? Right. They saw him and they said, oh, we have to, we have to put him in there because he, 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 and, he, and I, I still look back at it. I remember, like, I don't quite get why the, the bleach blonde hair and the glasses look. Um, you know, I remember even back then I kind of went, well, that's a little weird looking, even though yeah. that was more 80s than... Um, and like you said, Grace Jones, you know, she was just one of these people who just had such a wild personality that she would make a great, you know, femme fatale slash hench person. Yeah. And I, I think she's terrific. She, she does hold up over the years, really. Yeah, and Zorin has some great lines. You amuse me, Mr. Bond. You know, right, like, right. Like little things like that are yeah. very classic moments. And then again, yeah. you know, even the mentor, the crazy scientist, you know, Max! 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 You know, he gets emotional <laughs> yeah. in the end. I, I, I'm buying all that. Where things start to go horribly wrong for me again, uh -huh. and I start gripping the couch. Yeah. And it's actually, it's unfortunate, because it's after a really cool gadget moment where Bond uses those glasses to see through the glass. Yeah. I thought yeah. that was kind of cool and smart. That was yes. kind of neat. But Carrie Sutton, the Bond girl. Stacy Sutton. Stacy yeah. Sutton. Yeah. I, you know what? It's not even important that I remember <laughs> it, because she's not important <laughs> enough. Maybe... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I could say this officially on air, but maybe the worst Bond girl to me in any Bond film. James! 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 Yeah. How many times? <laughs> James! Yeah. And it's just grating, <laughs> and she's she seems like a terrible actress. Yeah. It's and one of those where he would want to change his name after this one because it's you, you never you never heard after how many James Bond films you never heard James uttered that much. Yeah. Just she, I didn't buy their connection. I didn't get her story. Yeah, she has an accent, and then she doesn't have an accent, and then she turns into a Valley Girl. Yeah, and then she has no Valley Girl accent. It's like yeah. somebody get her a dialect coach. Yeah, she yeah she's she is difficult to swallow, uh, and and it's. It's weird because again, like I said before about how they, you know, when they did Octopus, yeah, I thought they they knew Moore's age and they knew how to play off of that well by having a, a, a Bond girl who was paired evenly and and even his action scenes in Octopus, yeah, I kind of feel like 
it's it's more you know using the opponent's um, motion against them kind of stuff mm -hmm. as opposed to being here yeah they make all the wrong moves in that respect and the Bond girl wow does that show because again oh. she I mean even Roger Moore himself had said in interviews I knew it was time to go when I realized I was older than my leading lady's mother so <laughs> yeah um, and, and, and again she's and she's pretty but that doesn't cut it in fact I love the part when he goes to the house. And he wakes up, you know, he sleeps over, he sleeps on the sofa or on the, right. in the chair. And she walks in with breakfast. And when you look, I mean, she is totally made up. Yes. The hair is done. The, the makeup is spotless, you know. So it just kind of, it's like, I, I get it. She's pretty, but you guys don't know how to do a character. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. I feel like they were ticking off the boxes of, you mm. know, James has to be with this pretty girl, as opposed to what they really did well in Fear Eyes Only with BB, where they said, you know, he yeah. goes, you know, uh, come come with me and I'll buy you an ice cream. Uh, right. You know, Which a lot of people like, don't like, and I actually do like a lot, because I like I seeing that it. part of his personality, yeah. It's a real moment with right. Roger Moore's James Bond. Exactly, yeah. Um, what did you think? What did you think of the overall plot? Well, the plot is fine, really. Um, and again, it, it kind of has that Goldfinger-esque uh, story, yeah. Yeah. you know, where the, the villain is going to monopolize, uh, you know, the supply of X and, mm -hmm. and raise its value by destroying something. And this one, it it does it really effectively well because the, the, the mission was to radiate Fort Knox and destroy yeah. the gold. So Bond is really fighting for gold, essentially. Yeah. Here, they combine that element with the fact that he's going to kill a lot of people in the process. Kind yes. of a Superman, yep. original Superman 1979 yeah. story. That's where you get that tension, so that works. Um, in fact, I kind of, in Octopus, they do a little bit better because they have the actual audience there. Right. So right. you see the stakes there. Yeah. Um, but anyway. It does, I think the actual plot works. And by the way, one of the things they do in Octopussy that they do here again is they mesh, uh, they start out with something that is kind of a, a lifestyle plot. I'm not saying that right. But in the first, in Octopus, you had the, the Fabergé egg was the stepping off point. Yes. Which brought you to Sotheby's and, and you know, a kind of a, a, a posh lifestyle mm -hmm. um, atmosphere, which leads you to the big plot, which was the nuclear bomb. Yes. Here, it's kind of similar. They, they start off with the thing about the horse races, which takes you to elegant horse races and these magnificent stables, yep. which, again, takes you to the next plot, which is the attack on Silicon Valley. So all of that, I think, works pretty it well. It well, I agree. If, if they polished this a little bit better, you could have had a pretty standout Bond story, frankly. You could have. You could have. And, and you know, I think I came off of this one. Right. I, I sound exhausted, <laughs> damn it. Yeah. Oh, the vapors. I got a case of the horribles. Um, I came off of this one. Not angry is not the right word, but just sullen, sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and because I'm like, no, I'm such a defender of all the James Bond films. I'm a defender of James Bond as a franchise, uh -huh. and I don't, I can't defend this one. Like, <laughs> like I can't uh -huh. imagine in my wildest dreams somebody going to me, hey, can you recommend a good uh, James Bond film so I can uh -huh. get to know the character? Yeah. And me going. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely, view to a kill. Right. Go for it. Where do you see the fire engine scene? Yeah. Your head will explode. Yeah, and again, I mean, they do make a lot of weird choices. I mean, even the scene, the the hot tub scene with the with the Russian um, Chikowski. Yeah. Again, you sort of watch it and you go, "Why is this part of the movie? Why am I watching this? What does this have to do with anything else?" Yeah. We we, we could not have skipped this altogether. Yeah. It was it was it was at the height of the Roger Moore formulaic need to yeah. check off all the things. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, I. I'm with you. We, on that. we need more Bond girls. We need Bond, more shags in this film. So we need to bring in this random actress to just do a scene for no reason. Yeah. I, and again, it's and it's frustrating because it is kind of the spy versus spy moment. But just totally the way, right. The way they do it is they focus on the more silly aspects of it as opposed to. And, and again, Roger is he really has outstayed his his tenure at this point by his own admission yeah right. i mean octopussy was the one that really should have been his swan song because yes. i think again uh i mean when you when you think when you think of roger's career going through the sort of golden age of roger you know doc you know live and let die through the spy i love me moonraker gets kind of silly and over the top they pull it back down for fear eyes only and 
again, he's starting to look his age. He, he has Bond girls who he says, I'll buy you an ice cream. <laughs> Octopussy is the one, again, they, they did it right where they sort of showed what you can do with an aging yes. agent. And even even Maud Adams, you know, I know we're talking about Octopussy now, mm. but, you know, is, is it feels appropriate yeah. for Roger Moore. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't feel outlandish. But yeah. I, 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 you're right. I mean, you know, I want to acquiesce a little bit on, on A View to a Kill in mm. that good story, great score, uh, some mm. great gadget moments, um, some some good dynamics, great yeah. bad guy, great henchman, um, Mission Bond, which I always like, Lover Boy Bond, which I always try to promote. Yeah. Um, so it's got those aspects. Just for me, I, I'm, I there was something so core to its elements uh -huh. that. I have to call it that this for me is Roger Moore's worst movie. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna start this one. <laughs> for me, it was an easy one. I, I thought I had disliked it. I confirmed it. And I do believe out of if I line them all up in a row, this would come last for yeah. me, Roger Moore wise. Mm. Yeah, and I I can't argue with that. I mean, there's a part of me that would like to sort of I mean, because it Roger one that's has... almost equal to being bad for this one? Um, no, I mean, or is it far and away Roger Moore's worst for you? Well, I wouldn't say it's far and away because I kind of feel like, like, not that the man with the golden gun is bad, but that to me is is sort of so lukewarm <laughs> and inoffensive that it's it's just kind of there. Yeah, neutral. I, I like, yeah, right. It just kind of hits this kind of perfectly neutral, right. lukewarm temperature. Um, whereas A View to a Kill seems to want to do more stuff and want to get a little more to give you some some bang for your buck. Um, but again, they, they I mean, they tell you from the get-go, this is going to be a light-hearted romp, you know, so it, it is almost the antithesis of what most of us want from a James Bond film. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, um, <laughs> I need to go take a nap. <laughs> All right, well, that that is uh, a view to a kill. We both sure so the theory works under that. So far, we're, we're a bit on a roll. Um, mm -hmm. So we are going to now move on. To Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton and wow. License to Kill. Are you sure you ready right? for that? I, I am ready. I hope you're all ready for that. You get a <laughs> sense of what's coming. That's it. Um, hope everybody's not too bloodied and bruised. Uh, this has been David Zeritsky. And Joe Darlington. We'll see you real soon. See you next time.